Welcome back. My name is Mulligan and this is the Sexy Brutality. We're still in the basement. Still trying to grow the tree. Which I hope has grown a little bit. And it seems we need to grow the tree a bit at a time to get enough electricity going or power or energy. I have no idea what this whole contraption is about. Okay. Tree face the room, how would a man. Blah, blah, blah. So we are putting some more water in. It is interesting because we are repeating the, the same time. There we go. Now this has more power. And the door is open. See some open up. And there we go. Sesame. Sesame. Let's go inside. Let's see what is inside here. A secret. What the fuck? Who the fuck are you? Oh my god, what has he done to you? Noir? Ron? What? Are you the Marquis? Huh. He gave you something, ah. Oh, this asshole. It's a skeleton? Leather mask? Very well, this is utterly tiresome. I mean, well done, and so forth. You found my secret, etc., etc. And then I must look cruel, shining what appears to be a madman up in a dungeon. Using these mirrors to show him the guest being murdered over and over again. Tormenting him until his tears of sorrow and rage fill the tank that is his prison. But it's all very necessary, you see. Yes, I can see how, but look at me, but. Wouldn't take this, get out of here? No, no, I'd rather think a knot. Yes, that's better. I control every part of this world. This creature, however, is what you might consider the battery. He's my power source, and he is not in your control. The two of you were the only aspect outside my grasp, as you see, stopping our time. But now I think it's time to end this, not with a bang or a fanfare, but with a simple snap of my... What, how dare I go? As I thought, he was not. Sapphire tearing. I know where to use this. Run, boon! This is very much not over. Time back. We know where to use this. We have to go out. We have to go into the little outhouse. Can I use this? No. Now, interesting. It will inter be interesting to see what he's trying to do. Because. I don't know. I was unstoppable until now, so. And uh, why can't he just snip his finger? So, so many questions. I mean, he apparently knows that the day is repeating over and over and over again. Because he shows the death of the guest over and over to him for those, so he can produce energy for his power. So, but he can't control the guy is a Marquis, I would guess is a Marquis. And he can't control him. And he couldn't control us, but now he can? Strange. But okay, we know where to go. Not that hard. Yeah, yeah. Our room. Hello. Just to evade you a little bit. So we get uh, the sapphire tear ring. The next thing is probably a burning heart. Oh, I have you. 
and after the burning hut I have no idea. These are the only two I really know. Which will... To my room at night, it ain't right. Okay. Let's go outside, come on. Then we are going downstairs. That's the FPS drop, I don't know. And we are going down another flight of stairs. It is far too easy. Oh. I forgot about this power. To be honest. The garden. The gardens. The Marquis was an indifferent gardener, but Eleanor loved the mansion grounds and under her care they flourished. The fountain and its statues was carved from a single block of marble. Important at a phenomenal expense imported. Expense and worked on day or night by Trinity for almost a full year. The full extent of the mansion ground extends far beyond what can be seen from the terrace. For a moment I thought the whole garden was made out of one marble block. But the fountain itself still what a big marble block there had to be. Back into the Marquis, yeah, who, who, would, who would have thought we were right here? See, exploring help us. What the fuck? Uh, what the fuck in your pocket is making the house? The sound is astonishing. Uh, no, no clue, no clue what is happening. We are getting funneled into one direction. Lonely. Okay. Uh, it seems like uh, he didn't only be we here earlier. Uh, we start there. So we have to probably go through the whole mansion, getting past all those clocks. And. Uh, Running through a burning mansion. I don't know why it's burning at this point. I don't know. Not uh, my problem, I guess. We probably have to set our spawn at end of every. I oh, know we just have to go out, which means we probably. Why is everything burning? I don't understand why stuff is burning. By the way, what about here? Yeah? No fire. Music is still going crazy. So I guess in the next screen we will see uh, the bad guy. Are we now right? Yes. Eleanor, probably, I would guess. Lafcadio! I see it's been such a long time. Would you talk to Lucas? Something seems to be troubling him. He's always looked up to you, you know. And now he teases you dreadfully about your lifestyle. But he respects you enormously. More than anyone else I know. I believe he's always wanted to be more like you, perhaps when he's a little older. Or more mature, I should say. Oh, you have our ring. Can I see? Yes. You, by the way, have a teleport in your room. Okay. Are you giving me a burning heart? Ruby heart. I remember you pre presenting it to us when you married us. You must take it. Lucas will be missing it, I'm sure. I know where we need to go for that. Tell him I just needed a rest. This little guy is heavy. 
I hope he won't be mad that I'm missing the party. I know he loves the mansion, but this is all we've ever really needed. This right here, this is our perfect little bird. Please tell him I will wait for him, won't you? I will wait here whenever he is ready. Okay. Pretty long hair, by the way. Can't move. Okay. Hello. That was Eleanor, the Marquis's wife. She's always here, safe in this place. You have seen some of the truth now. The mansion was on fire. We, the guests, died. It should have ended there. But the creature in the golden mask, somehow he brought them all back, torturing us over and over. I try to help them, try to find some peace in all this pain. He's so, so strong. But with that ring, I believe we can stop him. There's a secret place. My, I mean, sixpence was so close. Take that ring to the room where our room died. It will unlock the past. Eleanor left her mask for you. Take it. You are Eleanor. I mean, you have the, you have the hair. So we can now use the teleport. Yes. Eleanor's mirror walk. Eleanor was the life and soul that connected the people and places in the sexy brutality. Her mask allows you to travel by stepping into the mirror's place throughout the mansion. You can now walk through any mirror in the sexy brutality. The movements of all staff and guests are also being revealed to you on the map. So we are now at boss status. She always tried so hard to see the best in people. But it's what you see that will matter. Now look into the mirror and be gone. So she died too, Eleanor? I guess so. So the whole mansion was set on fire and everyone died. I've never seen inside the place, you know. I'm not sure whether to write importantly or just be quietly glad. Anyway, I've watched you, love Kadio. Your arrival was somewhat unexpected. All these years you've done your dutiful loop, dying along with sixpence in the shepherd. Then all of a sudden, one day, you were running around, ruining everything. It took me a little while to figure it out. And then, of course, I knew that bloody creature that had to be involved. I'm sure she has spun all the tales about me and what's happening here. I'm sure they have left out some rather important information. I will be utterly candid with you now, Boone. I could end this right now. I could end you. I have the power. Perhaps she's right and I am a monster, but we might all be monsters here. I want you to see, to understand. Come with me. Okay. Why would I go with you? Okay. Now the first question is, am I really a murderer? And to that the answer is most assuredly yes. You see this man here, dear Reginald? I killed him stone dead. It was my finger that pulled the trigger, but it was my command. Family as well, you know. Okay. Time has then stood still. So yeah, just disbelief in agony, so we can't really do much, only follow them. Ah, the heart of the casino, our dear friend Clay. In this scenario I had him die from a shot of venom from the same spider which would go on to devour his precious wife. 
he did like a drink later, but never when he was working, you know. No really saw him dying, to be honest. I only knew that it was poison. I was down to the bowel was a horrific way of dying. So fitting, she was so beautiful, Trinity, the moss by moonlight. It was what Clay called her, she loved that name. A moss, so I thought it very fitting for her to be eaten by my giant spider. I never had one, you know. I'm sure nothing could possibly grow that big, but by God, I wish they did. I would have kept it in a room, just like this one. Bound and thread and waiting for the end. Creature from a nightmare. Huh. Right. This one was rather fantastical. When we found that fish, I did so want to believe the story. A voodoo fish. I rather suspect it was just a guppy with some Patrick particularly bright colors. The man who sold it to me must have thought it was I was the most gullible person under the sun. But I wasn't paying for the fish. I was paying for the story. Eleanor called me a fool, but she did love to watch him in his tank. Best fortune I ever spent. I would like to say that Willow would never have hanged herself, but then a long time ago I stopped even trying to pretend I could understand what another person might do. Are you the Marquis? Are you both? I mean, the Marquis spent all the money, right? So this is all more or less I'm simply fantasy. Nothing is real. Miss Tequila Bell, what a voice. She was a living out work of art. I murdered her with the notes of a song and then had my staff throw her body down a garbage chute. I know. I saw. Maybe for players who didn't saw this. Mount of Pride and Carnage she has created. Or across her body. Glass window smashed to pieces. Which we now have the ability to do the same. Grayson Red. It really wasn't a party until those two got here. Grayson really is such a complete scoundrel, but my god, he is fun. Or he was at least. Red really would have done anything for him. I'm almost certain that it would be so much more painful if Grayson had gone second and Red had to watch him die first. Yes, perhaps I would change this one. Perhaps. All right. Ah, all right. I smetted him down in a furnace like a big goat bar. My mansion had many strange and wonderful creations, but the lift that doubled as an incinerator, that would have been something. I like to think that if Aldrum were able to choose how he went, then perhaps he would have chosen something like this. Though in a way, he almost did. Yeah, because you all died in a fight. I have no idea how. I would have thought at least some people would have been able to stay in love. Oh, we can't go. I thought for a moment we just can go up into the room, but okay. Thanos, what a mind to waste. It wasn't just this mansion that he built, you know. There are similar works of architectural, uh, architectural genius all over the country. It was a grouchy and often tiresome old man, 
thought that mind was like a cracked diamond. At least his words still will still live on. Well, Boon, you have heard my confession. As I said, I am a murderer. This is not to brag or boast. I am not good or clever for it. I am sinful and gross. I've killed everyone in this mansion. But there's one person who didn't die. Eleanor. My guess. Who's that? One man who survived the events of the day here. Me. Who woke up in a broken body with a broken mind. They put a mask on his face and a machine forced him to breathe until he was fit to stand. We are the Marquis. One of this, those two. Okay. A man, a, a man, man. A man who served his time, but time that could never be enough. Okay. The man who lived when all the others did not. I would like you to meet that man, Boon. I would like you to meet him and then decide if this day should end. It is me. Probably. I would guess. Time is nearly over. And the hard room. The answer will be behind these doors. Come and find me there. She and I will be waiting for you. So you are the Maki. Why are you... I, I'm standing right before the door. Come on. Where am I? Why the fuck am I here? What? How far... I'm not far away, okay. So... This is more or less one last try to find stuff. Place floods your memory brochure. The furnace elevator. At the center of the mansion is a glorious statue carved in the shape of a phoenix. It is one of the crowning glories of the mansion, a marvel of vision, art and engineering. The statue was originally an enormous furnace that warmed the mansion before the entire heating system was redesigned and improved by Senos. The Marquis also included a secret in the statue, however shared only with a very select few. It conceals an elevator leading down into sections of the basement, kept hidden, kept hidden from prying eyes. So secret, in fact, that the original safety codes to activate the elevator were changed, so not even Thanos knows the true combination. So to get this, uh, all these informations, you could now go around and do this. Why are you going to make this hard on me? Wait. Uh, uh, give me card. Give me card. Give me card. Did I get this card? I did get this card. He's gone. He's in the room. There's a glowing heart on the door wrapped in blue flames. The door will not move. The door is reacting to the Marquis signet ring. The blue flames die down. Go inside. Where the fuck am I? Just taking a look, okay. Going back up. So what chapel? Chapel winding key, another card. You remember. The shop is the waiting room. The most nondescript of nondescript rooms. Police relax and take the waiter. Re there really is nothing of note to take note of here. Most people would likely have completely forgotten ever having seen this room. 
if they ever did even see it in the first place. Would you even recognize it from this angle? Perhaps, perhaps you caught a peek, just a glimpse of a hint, once before long ago. Does it feel like a lifetime has passed since then? For some, it certainly does. The room itself may not be important or noteworthy, but perhaps we should see if what's the other side jogs our memory. Ah, getting dry mouse. So much stuff here. Sunflowers. Uh, okay, hello. Laura no, no, no. Wait. We are back here? We are back here. This is the very beginning. Okay. What do I have to do? Okay, let's see. Oh. Let's get the blank cartridge. We got the winding key. We can now have our starting point here. Which we probably need to do. Okay. Move. Come on. All those long animations. Those two guys are here. So he hidden. Place lots of memories. Going around, activating all those memories. We forgot this one, I believe. Yes. Sharp is the smoking room. Who knows what she of what schemes were hatched here in the smoky haze of the Marquis, most personal in a sanctum. What greatness was, was planned, what madness was plotted. Lucas and his uncle-in-law, Sixpence, would often sit together here long into the evening, discussing the future of their families. What ambitions did these two discuss? What dreams did they dare realize together? The places where events occur, both tragedies and triumphs, are often recorded, but what of the humble spaces where the ideas first take seat? The Marquis had many secrets and many expenses. An enormous amount of effort went into making the running of the mansion appear effortless, but none of it came without cost. This room was where the unofficial version of official documents were kept, a beauty parlor for accounts where numbers were massaged and rules were relaxed. Grayson Grayson himself constructed the safe in this room, utterly uncrackable to anyone without the code. It kept the truth of the, at the heart of the affluent seeming mansion hidden away from priving eyes. The hunting room. A hunter in this misguided use, the Marquis came to abhor the concept as he matured. He kept his trophies as a reminder of the man he no longer wished to be. Feeling guilty and sour whenever he looked up on them, in, his, in this way he was able to remind himself of who he had been and in turn who he never wanted to become again. His wife, his wife discouraged him from visiting this room, not wanting him to cause himself unnecessary suffering, but exposing himself to the grief and pain was the only thing he believed gave so many unnecessary deaths at his hand any meaning. Okay, let's wait for him to go. Bam. Because thing itself, if we activate 
There's a candy. We should be able to talk to whoever that is. So we talk at last. It's been a long road for you. Or to come back here. Take this. And I will play on. King of Diamonds. Okay. Jacket, an invitation. Which we can read. The prison. A prison here in the heart of the mansion. If you were to touch the walls, you would fear hundreds, thousands of tally marks. Counting days, months, years. There's a tree, a tree growing from the cracks in the floor. How long would it take for the little sapling to fu become fully grown? How many years? So we have those two. We don't need guests. Reginus Sixpence. It's a genius clockmaker and mechanic who was originally really commissioned to create the extravagant ma timepieces featured throughout the mansion. On one visit, he brought his niece along to help with a particularly challenging piece. After the Marquise met her, the rate of sixpence invitations to the mansion increased dramatically, and over the years and events that follow, the two men became extremely close. But Reginald could be somewhat blind to the intention and emotions to others. He has become distraught that one of the Marquis's projects that Sixpence helped with may have a dark and more dangerous aim than he imagined. Okay. I have to probably reset, restart the day. But I have to stop this here. I feel we are close, but there's probably some more story going on. So we have to continue this next time. So don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and comment. And as always, thank you for watching. And I will see you next time.